Hello kids and welcome back from our long weekend. We had a solid three days of weekend. But of course, now we are back to the same old, same old. We're gonna be continuing where we had left off last class. We had just sort of finished up with lesson 12. Now we're going to be moving on to lesson 13. So with lesson 13, we're going to still be working on our ratios. We're still going to be looking at all of them just the same. We're not going to be using a double number line like what we had done before. We're going to be learning some new things. We're going to be taking our ratio tables and we're going to be learning how to make equations out of them. But before we even get into our equation talk and even our ratio tables, we're first going to start off with exercise one. With exercise one, it starts off with saying George is mixing a special shade of orange paint. He mixed one gallon of red paint with three gallons of yellow paint. That makes sense. Red and yellow, they make orange. But we've mixed one gallon of red paint with three gallons of yellow paint. Based on this ratio, which of the following statements are true? Okay, so we're just doing a little bit of true or false in the beginning. First statement says three-fourths of a four-gallon mix would be yellow paint. Where are we getting four from? I see a one, I see a three. Where are we getting a four from? Oh, wait. If I'm mixing one gallon and three gallons together, that's giving me four total gallons all mixed together. So this is saying three-fourths of a four-gallon mix would be yellow paint. Well, out of that four gallons, we know that three gallons of them would be yellow. So three out of the four... Three out of the four would be yellow. This one's going to be true. This going to be true because three-fourths, that's saying three out of every four gallons, basically. So three-fourths of a four-gallon mix would be yellow paint. That's saying three gallons out of four gallons would be yellow. Which, as we know from up here, three gallons need to be yellow. So that one's going to be true. Over here, we have every one gallon of yellow paint requires a third of a gallon of red paint. Well, let's look at it like this. We start off with a ratio of 1 to 3, do we not? This is 1 gallon of red to 3 gallons of yellow. Well, the question is asking us about 1 gallon of yellow, not 3. So in order to get this 3 to become 1, I need to divide it by 3. Let's, let's move this over here a little bit just to get myself a little bit more space. I'm going to need to divide this by 3. But remember, we've talked about this. If I do anything to the right side of my ratio, I have to do the exact same to the other side in order to keep it equivalent. So I need to divide both sides by 3. So that's going to give me my 1 gallon of yellow. And 1 divided by 3, that's going to give me 1 third. So that means I have a third of a gallon of red paint for every 1 gallon of yellow paint. That's what it's asking us. So this is going to be true as well. The third one saying Every one gallon of red paint requires three gallons of yellow paint. Do I even need to look at this one? It says it right in the ratio. 
write the ratio. It says one gallon of red to three gallons of yellow. In this, it's saying one gallon of red, three gallons of yellow. So this one is going to be true. Yeah, of course. Fourth one says there is one gallon of red paint in a four gallon mix of orange paint. Well, we already mentioned before that this one gallon red, three gallons of yellow is talking about a four gallon mixture. And out of that four gallon mixture, remember we have one gallon of red. So this one's also going to be true for us. Let's see if we can do a clean sweep here. Let's see if all of them are going to be true. This one's saying there are two gallons of yellow paint in an eight gallon mix of orange paint. So two gallons of yellow paint in an eight gallon mix of orange paint. Huh. Well, it's one gallon of red paint and four, and if I were to size that up, I would have two and eight. If I were to multiply this one gallon by two to get two, and that four gallon by two gives me eight, so it looks like it's going to work. But wait, this question is talking about red paint, and this question is talking about yellow paint. For yellow paint, there's three gallons of yellow paint for a four gallon mixture. So of course, if we're talking about an eight gallon mixture, there's going to be way more than two because there was already more than two in a four gallon. So this one's actually going to be false. If it had said something like there's at least two gallons of yellow paint, it would be true. But this is saying there are two gallons, no more, no less. There's exactly two gallons of yellow paint in an eight gallon mix. And that's not true. If we were to size this up, we would find out that there's actually going to be six gallons of yellow paint in an eight gallon mixture of paint. on to exercise two. Exercise two is going to say based on the information of this red and yellow paint that was given to us in that first exercise, we need to now complete this table. Okay. Well, the first line is going to be a little bit easy for us because we, re we remember that whenever there was three yellow paint, we needed one red paint. That was our ratio. Our beginning ratio was 1 to 3. If we look over at this relationship, what this relationship is asking us is if I want to find my yellow paint, how do I find it? Well, I have my 1 and I've multiplied it by 3. That's my relationship between my two numbers, my 1 and my 3. Up next, on the next line, it tells us that now we have two gallons of red paint. So what I've done is I've taken my one and I've multiplied it by two in order to get to two. What am I going to have to do with my yellow paint? Well, anything that I do to one side, I'm going to have to do to the other. So I'm going to multiply this one by two as well. It's going to give me six. And what's the relationship between 6 and 2? It's going to be 2 times 3. So in order to get 6 from 2, I need to multiply it by 3. Our next line, we're not given our red paint, but we're given our yellow paint. Our yellow paint, we have nine gallons of yellow paint. So 
So that means that we started off with our original ratio and we multiplied that 3 by 3 in order to get 9. So that means I need to do the same over here with the red. This means I'm going to have 3 gallons of red paint. And we can see over in the relationship that we have our 9 is equal to our 3 and we have to multiply that 3 by 3 in order to get our yellow paint. For 12, well, I can write 12 over here. That's going to be equal to some number. And if we look over here at the relationship, I'm starting to see a pattern. Times 3, times 3, times 3. So I'm going to assume it's going to be times 3 again. So what number times 3 is going to give me 12? That's going to be 4, which means we're going to stop 4 in right there. And, of course, if you were just counting, you would have realized that this actually just goes up by 1s. But for the next one, we have 5. And sticking with this pattern over here, I'm going to slot the 5 in there, and it's going to be 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is going to be 15. So that means I'm going to need 15 gallons of yellow paint. Now, if I was given any number of red paint, we've already determined our relationship over here. It looks like no matter what, if I multiply my red paint times 3, it looks like it's giving me what my yellow paint is. Because I have 1 times 3, and that gives me 3. I have 2 times 3, that gives me 6. I have 3 times 3, that gives me 9. I have 4 times 3, that gives me 12. And I have 5 times 3, that gives me 15. So let's say, for example, I had 20 gallons of red paint. Now, how would I be able to find out what my yellow paint was? Well, we just talked about it. The pattern seems to go that I take my red paint and I multiply it by 3, and that's going to give me what my yellow paint is. So let's take this 20, multiply it by 3, that means that to get the same mixture, if I use 20 gallons of red paint, I'm going to need to use 60 gallons of yellow paint. So it seems like no matter what, in order to get my yellow paint of 60, I'm going to need to take my red paint, in this case 20, and multiply it by 3. So we can actually use this to help us write an equation. As you can see up here on the table, it's labeling our red paint as R and our yellow paint as Y. So if instead of having this, if I just wanted to use those letters, I would have Y is equal to R times 3. Or, here's the thing, if I have a number and a letter next to each other in an equation, I don't even need to write this multiplication symbol. I can just leave it as y is equal to, and I like to put my numbers first, so I'm going to put 3r. So I get y is equal to 3 R. That's one equation that I can get from this. Y is equal to 3R. But this doesn't really help me in all situations. This helps me really well if I know how much red paint I have. Because then I just take my red paint and I multiply it by 3 and it gives me what my yellow paint is. But what if I'm given my yellow paint? What if, for example, I was given 
I was told I have 30 gallons of yellow paint. How am I going to find my red paint? Let's try to see if there was a relationship in the other direction. Well, I went from 3 to 1. I went from 6 to 2. I went from 9 to 3. I went from 4 to 12. And I went from 15 to 5. Okay. Well, we're not multiplying. It appears that we might be dividing in this case. It looks like what I'm doing is I'm taking my 3. If I divide 3 by 3, it's going to give me 1. If I divide 6 by 3, it's going to give me 2. If I divide 9 by 3, it's going to give me 3. And the same for these two. It's the same for 60 and 20 as well. So if I'm given 30, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to divide that by 3, and it's going to give me 10. Okay. Now here's something that we need to remember. If I wanted to not have to write division, because I don't like writing division. Division, it's just writing it looks yucky. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to multiply by a fraction. Because multiplying something by a fraction can be the same as dividing. So we're going to start and we're going to have r because we want to find out what r is. And that's going to be equal to one-third times our yellow. Because if I plug in my 3 for my yellow, I have one-third times 3. One-third times 3 is equal to three-thirds, and three-thirds is going to be equal to 1. If I were to plug in my 6 for that y, I would have 1 third times 6. Well, that's 6 thirds, and 6 thirds is equal to 2, and it looks like that works. So we can form an equation going both ways. We can form two completely separate equations going both ways. Keeping that in mind, we're going to move on to exercise three. We're still dealing with George. He now plans to mix red and blue paint. He's now going to create a beautiful purple. The color of purple he's decided to make combines red paint and blue paint in the ratio 4 to 1. Okay, so that means for every 4 red, we are going to have to have 1 blue. George can only purchase paint in 1 gallon containers though. Can't have any more than that. So he wants to construct a ratio table for all possible combinations for red and blue paint that it will give him no more than 25 gallons of purple paint. He doesn't want he doesn't want more than 25 total. Okay. Now, we need to be super careful with this. If we look at this table, the ratio that they give us is red paint to blue paint, but in this table it lists blue first and red second. So what we have to do, we were given the ratio 4 to 1, red to blue. We actually need to flip that around because it's asking us for blue to red. So we are actually going to be 1 and 4 because we have 1 blue and 4 red. And then we can talk about the relationship between this, okay? So 4 is going to equal 1 times what number? Well, anything times 1 is itself. So that means that this has to be times 4. Okay. okay. 
So if I were to go one up in blue, I'd have, obviously, two gallons of blue. And if I go up one here, I need to go up four here. Which will bring me to eight. So eight is equal to two times what number? Oh, it looks like four again. Okay. So it looks like we're falling into another pattern again. Let's just... I'm going to write times 4 over here for all of them, and we'll see if I need to change that later on. Okay, if I go up another 1 here, if I go to 3, then I'm going to need to go up another 4 here, and I'm going to go to 12. Let's see, 12 is equal to 3 times 4. Yeah, that's right. 3 times 4 equals 12. So 3 times 4 is going to give us that 12. Okay, that works out perfectly. Once again, if I go up 1, I have to go up another 4. So 4 and 16. Okay. 16 is equal to 4 times 4. Oh, that's perfect. 4 times 4 is 16. I know that. That's one of my square numbers. I have that one perfectly memorized. I know that's for, that's true. So now if I go up another 1, I'm at 5. If I go up another 4, I'm at 20. Is 20 going to be equal to 5 times 4? Well, you're darn tootin' it's going to be. 5 times 4 is going to give me that 20. And it's asking me no more than 25 gallons. If I look at my total number of gallons, I have 5 plus 20. Oh, perfect. That's 25 gallons exactly. I can't go any higher than this. My ratio table has to stop here. I'm not allowed to put anything else in, and I can't do any more than 25. Problem solved. Now it's asking us to write an equation that will let George calculate the amount of red paint he will need for any given amount of blue paint. So if we're trying to calculate the number of red paint, then we're going to take this R and we're going to have this R all by itself. So let's go over here and look over here at the relationship. Oh, well, this 4 represented my red paint. This 8 represented my red paint. This 12 represented my red paint. It looks like we've already found out what our relationship is that we're going to need to use in this equation. We're going to have our blue paint, which is either the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 in our relationship over here. And we're going to multiply that by 4. Now, once again, I like to write my number first. I like to write the number first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the 4. And remember, I don't need to put that time sign. I don't need to write my multiplication symbol when I have a number and a letter. I don't need it. It just makes it take slightly longer to write, so I don't need it. I'm just going to now change that. I'm just going to write the B for my blue paint. So for this, the first equation is going to be r is equal to 4b. Up next, I'll flip the page. Sadly, that means I'm going to have to stop looking at my chart. But luckily, you guys already have it copied down, so you don't need to worry about that. At the top of the page, it's telling us I need to write a second equation. That's going to let George calculate the amount of blue paint he will need for any given amount of red paint. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to have blue by itself. It's a shame I don't have my chart. I'm going to have to swap back so that I can see. Okay. I need to find out my blue amount given my red amount. 
Okay, well, if I had four red, if I was given the number four red, how do I find one from that? Well, it's obvious I'm going to have to divide or multiply by a fraction here. And in order to get to one, I need to divide it by itself. Okay, so that means that at least for this first one, I need to divide by four. Let's see if it works for all the same ones. Okay, eight. 8 divided by 4, well 8 divided by 4 is going to give me 2, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to see. 12 divided by 4, that gives me 3, perfect. 16 divided by 4, that's 4, that's perfect. 20 divided by 4 gives me 5, oh that's perfect. It's perfect, it worked perfectly for all of them. So, I could either write that I want my R, meaning my red, to be divided by 4, or, once again, I can multiply by a fraction. I can multiply by one-fourth. Multiplying by one-fourth is going to be the same as dividing by four. If I were to plug four in for r, that would be one-fourth times four. Well, that's four-fourths. That's equal to one. And as we remember back from the table on the last slide, that's exactly what we need. If I were to plug in 16 for R, that would be 1 fourth times 16. That's a total of 16 fourths, which is equal to 4, which is exactly what I want. So remember, multiplying by 1 fourth is going to be the same as dividing by 4. Next question saying, if George has 24 gallons of red paint, how much blue paint will he have to use to create his desired color of purple? Well, we are given an amount of red paint, and if we look back up at the question over here, this is the, qu this is the equation that we use when we have a given amount of red paint. So we were given 24 gallons of red paint, and we need to find out how much blue paint we need. So let's write this equation. We can actually solve it. So we have blue is going to be equal to 1 fourth times red. Now I need to take my 24 and I need to plug it in for the R, for my red paint. So blue is going to equal to 1 fourth. Now that I have a number, I'm going to have to write that multiplication sign. Times 24. Okay, so blue, that means that blue is going to be equal to 24 fourths. Blue is going to be equal to 24 fourths. And if I find out what 24 fourths is, that means that blue is going to be equal to 6 gallons. Because 24 divided by 4 is going to give me those 6 gallons. So if George has 24 gallons of red paint, he is going to need 6 gallons of blue paint. The next question is actually going to take what we just did and, and flip it on us. It's saying that George, he still has 24 gallons, and he thought that they were red paint, but he popped open the gallons and they're actually blue paint. He was fooled. He thought he had 24 gallons of red paint. He actually has 24 gallons of blue paint. Now that he's checked it, luckily he didn't go to the store and buy anything. Now that he's checked it, now he needs to know how much red paint he's going to need to make his perfect mixture. Okay. So, if we go back to this page, this equation here is for if we have any given amount of blue paint. This one's for any given amount of blue paint. Well, that's good news. Because we were just given an amount of blue paint. 
So now we know that we have to use this equation. R is equal to 4B. R is going to be equal to 4B. Okay. So now I need to take my 24 gallons. This is blue paint, so I need to plug it in at B. That means that R is going to equal to 4. Now that it's a number, I need to use my multiplication symbol times 24. So I need to do 4 times 24. If I do 4 times 24, that leaves me with R being equal to 96 gallons. So if George has 24 gallons of blue paint, he is going to need to buy 96 gallons of red paint. That is an awful lot of paint. It's an awful lot of paint. Part B, though. Saying that we're going to use the same relationship of red to blue that we used above. We're going to create a table that models the relationship of the three colors. We have our blue, we have our red, and we're going to now include a column for our total number of paint. It's going to be for our total number of paint. Okay. Well, we can set up all of these columns exactly like we had set them up before. It's not going to, this one's not going to be too much of a problem. Then we're going to have to use that to get our total. So remember, our blues just counted up by one, two, three, four, five. And then our reds, they counted by fours. So we have four, eight, 12, 16, and 20. Okay. So now I need to find out my total, which quite literally means I just need to add these. And that's going to equal my total. 1 plus 4, it's going to be 5. 2 plus 8, that gives me 10. 3 plus 12 is going to give me 15. 4 plus 16 is going to give me 20. And 5 plus 20 is going to give us 25. And we already checked 25 earlier because we were cheering and how that was going to have to be our last thing of the table because he only wanted up to 25 on the table. But our question didn't stop there. It's telling us also to write an equation that's going to model the relationship between blue paint and the total paint. It's going to help us answer the questions. So for this, we want to be able to find out our total number of paint if we were given how many blue, how much blue paint we had okay so let's look at it just like how we looked at the relationship for the last table we're going to look at this one for this one to get to, from one to five what do i need to multiply one by well anything times one is itself so i need to multiply this number times 1. Okay, so then that means 5 times 1. So my number must be 5. Let's check all the other numbers to make sure that 5 is the correct number. Okay, so, well, 2 times 5. Oh, that gives me 10. Hmm, 
That's 10. That's exactly what I needed it to be. Okay, let's test the next one. 3 times 5. Well, that gives me 15. That's perfect. 4 times 5. Uh, mm. Oh, wait a minute. Why am I... Mm. That's going to be equal to 20. That's perfect. Last is 5 times 5. 5 times 5. Oh, it's a square number. I love it so much. And I know, I know for a fact that's going to be 25. So it looks like... In order to find out what my total is, I need to multiply my amount of blue <coughs> by 5. Okay. So if I want to find out my total, T, I need to take my blue paint and multiply it by 5. So that means I'm going to put my 5 first because I like to put my numbers first. I don't need that multiplication symbol. I can just slap the B right on it. And next time it's asking us to value the ratio of total paint to blue paint. Value the ratio of total paint to blue paint. Okay, well that's going to be 5 to 1. Wait, 5 to 1? Yeah, because for every 1 of blue paint, there's going to be 5 total paint. And for every 5 total gallons, there's going to be 1 gallon of blue. Just 5, it fits so perfectly. It's almost as if this was, could also be written as... 5 over 1. And then it perfectly fits into that equation that we have. The value of our ratio is going to be 5 over 1, just like that. So how is the value of the ratio related to the equation? How is, how is 5 to 1 Related to this equation, it's the number that we don't need to multiply our blue paint by to get our total. multiply our blue paint by to get our total. How could I have not seen this? Well, let's see if it works in reverse. I can't, I can't make any assumptions unless I can make sure it works in the opposite direction. Let's say I wanted to, to make an equation where I know what my total is and I need to find out what my blue paint is. Okay, let's look at this. If I know what my total is and I need to find out my blue paint, okay, so I'm starting with 5, I need to get to 1, well, in order to get to 1 with division, I need to divide the number by itself. Okay, so I'm dividing by 5. Let's see if that works for everything else. 10. Okay, 10 divided by 5. Okay, that gives me 2. 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. 20 divided by 5 gives me 4. 25 divided by 5 gives me 5. Okay, so that looks good. That looks fine. Okay. So now I can write that in as an equation, okay? So I would write that as the equation B is equal to, and opposed to writing T divided by 5, I'm going to instead write 1 fifth T. Okay. So now if we're doing the reverse, before it asks you for the value of the ratio of total paint to blue paint, well now we need to reverse that. Now we need to do blue paint to total paint. Okay. So then I have a ratio of 1 to 5, or I could write that as 1 over 5, or 1 fifth. Wait a minute. 1 fifth? 1 fifth? It does work. It does work. And then for this one, the value of the ratio related to the equation, for this one, it would be what we multiply our total paint by 
in order to get the blue paint. That's what our ratio is. Our ratio is helping us set up our equations. How did we not see this sooner? It's incredible. Hopefully with this, we should, I mean, if I'm, if you're given a, perchance, maybe another table and can easily use that table to find the ratio, maybe be able to use, I don't know, maybe use that ratio to help find the equation easier. Maybe. Certainly seems like it could work. And I certainly hope that you're able to do it. Because with that, this video is basically going to be over. I don't have anything else to show you. I need to see if you guys can do what I've done up here on your own. So what I'm going to give you guys is I'm going to ask that you guys are complete the rest of the exercises for this lesson. I'm not asking you guys to touch the problem set. Don't even worry about touching that problem set. Just don't do it. All I want for you to do is going to be exercise 4, exercise 5, and exercise 6. It's all I need from you guys. Just prove to me that you could take what we've learned today and apply it to these other exercises. I'm sure you can. Again, if you have any questions, you can always send me a message on Schoology. I will be available until um, well, the end of class. I'll still be available a little bit after that as well, normally until 4. But after that, I kind of pay a little bit less attention. I'll still send a message if I see it, but I'm not sitting there making sure I'm checking every two minutes. So please be patient if you send me a message after four. With that, this is mostly done. But I will say something right now. And I will also post this in the message that I'm going to be sending on Schoology. So you will have this information in two different ways. Next Monday, a.k.a. Monday the 19th, I will be giving a test. It will be our first test of the quarter. Luckily um, for us, the 19th is also going to be an asynchronous day. So I will assign the test for Monday, and you will need to complete it before the end of the class on Monday. Unlike with classwork, where I'm a little bit more lenient, it will give you a little bit more time after the class period itself to finish it. For this test, I am going to need it to be finished then. If it seems like nobody is able to finish within that time, we might give more time after that. But... For the beginning, I think that two periods will be long enough to finish the test. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will, well, I won't see you tomorrow, but I certainly will see you on the 15th. Have a wonderful day.